Hey, Tales from the Flipside family, it's Emmett from Haven for Heroes. We've got a new show coming to the network. Come on in, check out the shop. We got the kids' comics right up front, so when they come in, we're making new comic book readers all the time. We got Scalactics, I'm a Scalactic dealer. We got Pops for days. We got other co toys and collectibles. Comics, we got lots of comics. Gotta excuse the mess though. We just had free comic book day and it was a banger and uh, they trashed the place, but that's great. We'll clean it up later. Come through, we got some recent back stock here. Last couple of weeks is here. More pops, DC. We got our magic. We do Magic the Gathering. We got a couple of cases of that. We got our fancy jewelry case for the high end stuff. We got all our sealed product. We have some Pokemon back behind there. We got our beautiful wall up here. Video games, we do retro video gaming. Lots of it, tons of it. Nintendo's very popular, very hot, Sega. Then we got some custom setups here. We got some uh, custom colors, custom boxes. Then we have our library, we call it. We have uh, over a million magic cards for making decks and sets. And then we have 900 square feet back here play space so that's our shop we're going to talk about running a comic book collectible shop that's going to be our show come in tune in watch us take care hey welcome it's emmett from haven for heroes and this is our new series called so you want to open a comic shop what we're going to do is we're going to go through the different business models like online uh like uh some of the big dealers like Cyberspace Comics and Mile High Comics, large um, like Forbidden Planet and Midtown. Uh, medium, there's tons of different examples of medium, but they're, they're, they're gonna have a, like a population of up, up to 100,000 in, in, around the area. And then small like ours, where you know we got a population of about 10,000 in our city. So we're gonna go through all those different types. We're also gonna bring in guests from all those different uh, genres of uh, business models and we're going to talk to them about how they do their business, how they do their buying. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the industry and where we think it's going and, and where it's been. So we're going to do a little bit of history of the comic industry and comic book stores and the rise of them. We're also going to hopefully bring in guests from the publishing industry so we can talk to them about where it's been and where it's going for, for them in the future. So if you have any interest in uh, opening a comic shop or selling comics even on the side, because there's also a third business, there's an, a fifth business model, which is the uh, side hustle, uh, where you can start up and just do comics just online in a small sense instead of a large scale. Uh, and there's all kinds of different, we're going to go through all the different selling apps. We're going to talk about them, pros and cons of everything. It's not gonna be a, uh, a sales pitch for anybody. This is all just gonna be information. In fact, what we're asking uh, mostly from the viewers is if you could please leave us comments about what you need to know, what you wanna know about how the comic uh, industry works, how comic stores work, how collectibles work. We're gonna go through uh, the whole procession of uh, ordering from uh, Diamond uh, and how they do their initial orders and then Lunar and Penguin will also show some ordering from some of our distributors for uh, gaming like Magic and Pokemon and what you have to do to get uh, to get up and running with that uh, so it's going to be if this show is going to be all about uh, starting and running a comic book shop and uh, so we've been open seven years uh, we're not a huge lightning storm, uh, fantastic success, but we're still in business seven years later through COVID. Uh, so we've had some pitfalls and we're going to talk about all those. We're going to talk about, uh, the goods and the bads and, uh, the craziness, uh, that is being a comic shop owner. Uh, we're also going to, uh, talk about how to run tournaments and how to run um, 
all the different kinds of tournaments. Not only uh, do we do Magic the Gathering and Pokemon, but we also uh, have run video game tournaments. And some of our other stuff like collectibles, buying and selling of collectibles, and the percentages, the margins that we look for. Uh, we're gonna get really in depth from our shop. I can't guarantee that when we bring in guests that they'll be as forth forthcoming, but hopefully they will so that you get a good idea of how uh, the comic book business model works. And it works differently for everybody. And that's what we wanna give you, a taste of everything. Because I'm closer to an old school, what they call an old school comic shop. Uh, we do a little bit online. We had to do a lot more online since uh, COVID, but uh, we really have uh, a big back stock. We uh, promote readers. Uh, we love when people collect and we don't mind uh, dirty flippers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, our focus on, is on getting people reading these books because that's your long term uh, business is the people that fall in love with the stories and fall in love with comics. And that's how I ended up in the, in the comic book business because I've loved them since I was seven years old. I've been reading uh, comics that long. Uh, my tastes have changed. Uh, a lot of times my tastes didn't come out uh, making me any money. <laughs> I like to read a lot of stuff that uh, is hard to make into television, uh, very fantastical stuff uh, or very weird stuff, but uh, it also is a point for the businesses that you can't just buy what you like if you're the owner. You have to buy what everybody likes. A uh, big complaint in the business is uh, comic snobs where you go into a comic shop and they put down what you like to read. Uh, that'll never happen here, and hopefully most of the guests that we bring in, uh, most of them are good friends of mine um, or of the channels. Um, I know there's some really good uh, owners out there that are friends of the Tales of the Flip Side. And we hope to get them on the show also. One of the big things that I don't do, which is um, a big part of the business now, which uh, I'm kind of gonna try to dip my toe in at some point, uh, is making variants, doing store exclusives. I haven't done one yet, and we're gonna try to have a couple of different uh, stores on that have done them, and they'll you know, hopefully help us through the whole process of doing that. So you can be with us when we're doing our, our first uh, variant. So that'll be uh, another big moment in our history, but it also, I think, will be a good uh, learning experience for everybody that's interested in getting into this business. Now, uh, this, will I be a millionaire uh, selling comics? Um, yeah, maybe, it's quite possible. Um, Comics come through our door uh, weekly. People bring us collections all the time. And is it possible that we could, somebody could bring us uh, Amazing Fantasy 15? Yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, I've seen stuff close. I've had stuff come in. I've had an old Hulk 180 and Hulk 181 come in the door. Um, I've had a Spider-Man 2 and a Spider-Man 50. Um, and as, Everything that's on the wall here has come through the door. There's uh, no no million dollar books, no tens of thousand dollar books, but you know a couple of books in the thousand dollar range. Uh, but it can can always happen. Uh, that's one of the things I love about the business is the is the uh, negotiating and buying uh, that stuff that comes through the door. But we're going to go through all that and how we do that and. Uh, like I said, what percentages we, we go. And hopefully uh, we can get some of those filmed if uh, we're gonna try and try to do that too and some of some of that. And, but like what I said, it's super important to help us out commenting on what you wanna see in this show because it's really the show is for you. It's uh, not for us. We're not gonna be selling anything. Um, <laughs> you know, everything is for sale, of course, but that's not what this show is about. Um, we're really a local little comic shop that gets people to come through the door and, and buy our comics here. We do a little bit online, and like I said, we'll get into that. Um, but the majority of our actually business that keeps our doors open is our Magic the Gathering. And we're gonna go big time into that and how it's almost like the stock market and how you can profit very well in the singles 
um, and that the seal and how the sealed works and and all that. Uh, buying and finding retro video games, how to find uh, those in your in your local area. We're going to go into a lot of different resources that, um, like everybody thinks, oh, all the resources are on the internet. They're not. There's a lot of other resources. Uh, there's a lot of home runs, and uh, I'm going to be giving all that information out. Uh, I'm not holding anything back. Uh, there's going to be no secrets kept uh, from our side. So. Uh, if you if you see something uh, that you're wondering about, ask us. I might not know, but I'm gonna know somebody who does know. Uh, got a lot of good contacts in the publishing industry and in the uh, actual comic industry as uh, retailers, and I'm gonna tap into all those guys and hopefully have them as uh, every, as many guests as we can. Uh, we're gonna do a great tour soon of um, a large internet dealer and he's gonna uh, we're gonna go through his warehouse and see his stuff and he's gonna talk about it the uh, platforms he uses and uh, pretty much how the, his business model works another part of the series is going to be about all the boring stuff about being an owner of a comic shop is like uh, buying paper towels and garbage bags and toilet paper and printer paper and uh, floor cleaner and uh, toilet bowl cleaner and hand soap for the bathroom. Uh, yeah, I know it, it's boring, right? Yeah, because it is boring. It's like I'm going on and on because that's what it's like, and you you have to keep up on that. And we're going to talk about that and where you can the different deals you can find and, and get from that. Set up a uh, subscriptions for people and, and what's your subscription deal? I'll go in through what mine is, and hopefully a lot of the other dealers will tell us what their subscription deal is for customers. We're going to do a lot of uh, in-depth stuff. Uh, if you're ever thought of opening a comic book shop or even any retail business. This is gonna be a lot of uh, stuff that can be used by anybody. Uh, we're also gonna talk about making videos for YouTube and we're gonna go into the whole thing uh, and making ads. How about your advertising budget? What you're gonna spend on advertising and where are you gonna spend it? Are you gonna spend it on Facebook ads, Instagram ads? Are you gonna do it locally through the radio? Uh, some places have local television stations that even do ads. So we'll even go through that and hopefully we can find some, uh, we'll definitely bring in some representatives. We'll go through uh, what ads cost, um, about how much to make an ad. And uh, right now, you're watching this film by uh, Bearded Rooster Productions and they'll talk about what they charge uh, for, uh, to make an ad for somebody. We're gonna try to bring in uh, people, the different ideas on whether they do newspaper anymore. Uh, we have something called the Little Paper, which we advertise in, and we'll show you that. Uh, it's a little local thing that's done locally. We've, all, we've also done diner mats, and whether that was good or bad, and how our experience. But we're gonna bring in, it's not just gonna be for me. I've been only in business seven years. We're gonna bring in industry leaders, uh, and we're gonna, they're all gonna talk about all their different experiences. So you're gonna get all, hopefully, all levels from this show. And we're also gonna talk about how, how and where to get your supplies for like bags and boards. And that there's not just one dealer out there. And we'll talk about the different ones. This is all gonna be kept uh, not personal and not my, you know, I've had videos on my own channel of the experiences I've had with some of them, but we're just gonna give you who's out there. It's not gonna be uh, uh, good or bad. It's just gonna be the options. And we're gonna also talk about who you can reach out to for uh, a lot of different information and all the little d small business uh, administration. Uh, we're gonna talk about their department and what they can do for you as, uh, as a business owner. So this is gonna be not a beginning to end, not like how to open your doors, but it's gonna be all the different parts uh, for opening a retail comic book collectible shop. And we hope that you really enjoy it uh, we really want you to uh, be involved and help us out with what you want to see and the knowledge that you need. Maybe you're a new comic book shop um, and you're having a tough time with something. Maybe we can help you out with it. So the lifeblood of a comic shop is subscriptions. Uh, 
The New York Times posted uh, several years ago, you can find it online, the story about uh, each comic book uh, subscriber spends about $40 a month. So you figure that, how many of those you need to pay your rent once your rent's paid, and you can then worry about other things. But, so we had over 50 subscribers at one point uh, before COVID, and it retracted all the way back to four. Yeah, just four. So we've now built back up to 12, and we're gonna try to get back up to that 50 number, but we are currently using a super archaic way of managing it. Before everybody left Diamond, uh, Marvel and DC, they had a nice subscription thing that finally was working well, and once everybody left, that blew that whole system up. So we're gonna be looking for a new subscription management program, and you're gonna be with us the whole way. We're gonna look at all the different programs. We're gonna get success, suggestions from all the viewers and uh, probably from some of the other retailers. We're gonna find out what they're using for their subscription base. But that's a real important part of your business. The way we do our subscriptions currently is that they get pulled uh, before they go out, before the comics go out in the stands, we try to pick the very best books uh, condition wise and we bag and board them and they get 10% off their books. So they get free bags and boards and 10% off. Uh, I know there's a lot of different models out there and we're going to be talking to other shops about that. And then different models may work in different areas better than others. So that's going to be a big part of the show also. We are going to uh, be looking at all these different things that can profit you in a way that it's consistent. Subscription base is, a, as you see online, uh, on television, if you watch Shark Tank, they're, man, they're always hot for the businesses that have a subscription model. So that's just part of our business is the subscription model, but it is a great part. But it also builds a community because these people are the people that are gonna show up every Wednesday or Saturday to pick up their books. You get to talk to them about new books coming out. They're the people that are gonna get your previews guides and they're gonna comb through it to find the new hot book that's coming out. But also sometimes you get like a speculator and they're gonna just contact you. They, want, they don't want every moon night. They don't want a subscription like this where they get every issue. They may say, hey, I want 10 of this new book coming out or they want 25 and the one in 25. So how, how to do that and how to handle that and what you gotta go about. So like a lot of people, what I do for my, my subscribers is if they want a one in 25, I give them the one in 25 for free, but they have to buy 25 issues. Um, I, I know that sounds crazy, but I don't sell 25 issues. I'm in a very small market. If a, a very popular book for me will be like between five and 10 copies. Um, sometimes I overbuy to get to that one in 10, but I almost never get a one in 25. But I'm willing to order it if the customer's willing to buy those 25 and I will give them the one in 25 for free. Um, I also give them a little bit better discount than the 10% if they're buying 25 books um, just to cover my uh, shipping and a little bit of profit uh, for the shop. So we'll talk about, uh, like I said, no secrets held back. We're gonna be all about telling you all of our tricks and trades that we use uh, in the comic book industry, in the magic industry, in the Pokemon industry, in the retro video gaming industry. We are doing everything. <laughs> and for the other show, we also do VHS, uh, we have a ton of sealed VHS, um, including mostly a lot of uh, Dragon Ball Z, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon videos, but also uh, a lot of horror stuff. So uh, we're gonna bring that up and we'll show some of that stuff. We don't really have a big spot for it in the shop yet. We're doing most of that online, but that's the other thing we're gonna go into. Is ev Does everything have to be in the shop. If you're gonna be doing sales online, can you be doing other things that people bring into the shop that is profitable if you can buy it right? Speaking of online stuff, we're gonna talk about uh, your POS system also. And so we purchased the one from Diamond. 
Um, but now that it doesn't really function, have all the functions that it had now that they had the breakup, we may be moving on to another one. We'll go through that whole process here also. Uh, but there's also all, a lot of other things that you have to, like all of the different formats and platforms to sell online. Also, um, you know, getting a CPA. Do you need a CPA for, for, for a comic book shop? Do you, do you need a, uh, to have a lawyer on retainer? Where do you get your insurance? What types of insurance? Like currently, uh, my insurance, just as a little snippet, is capped. So collectibles have a cap on them unless you go through different companies. Now, the, the price varies quite a bit when you go from uh, a capped system to an uncapped system. And we'll talk about that and we'll go through the different companies uh, that are actually doing giving insurance for collectibles. Uh, and if you're doing it through your house, how you can get maybe a writer. Uh, so we're gonna be talking to some insurance agents too. Like I said, this is gonna be a full view of everything. It won't be in chronological order because it'll be how I, the timing of about how I can get guests and uh, the different subjects. But we're gonna be all about talking about everything you need in, in not only the comic business, but the collectible business and really good for any business out there starting up the things that you need to think about the things you need to have and the attitude you need to have we're going to be talking about that too um, how much time can you put in i actually do this part-time i have a full-time job it's a pensionable job so i'm going to wait you know i'm i'm holding out for that retirement and that pension so i'm doing double duty luckily i have uh, two really good partners right now who are working partners and uh, when I can't be around, they're holding up the shop and doing the right thing. So we'll talk about that and we'll talk about taking on partners and we'll talk about uh, how much money you wanna make or you can live on in, in your area. And if you opened a comic shop, could you survive? Uh, could two people survive? And we'll talk about that. And that's really all about, it'll come down to the hustle. but. We'll talk about the different models and how you can get there and what you can do. Um, I know there's, we're gonna have a couple of people who are way more successful than me uh, that are gonna have some really good insight on how to make money in this business. And I'm gonna learn a lot. I hope you guys earn a lot too. Like I said, we're not holding anything back. All of our pimples and scars, uh, so this is our basement where we're storing some stuff currently. Uh, we're going to talk about that and uh, helping to plan for that and what you need to do uh, about buying habits. <laughs> so there's about a hundred thousand more comics down here than there is upstairs. Uh, and if they can't see it, you can't sell it. So what do you do? So we're going to do a basement sale at some point coming up and have some of our good regular customers. It won't be a free for all. So it'll just be for a specific group of people that uh, buy a lot of back issues and they'll have free reign to come through here and they'll get a killer, killer price to cut down some of my inventory because we have a line on a, on a really big collection that we're working on. So that's gonna be a big part of the show too is like everything, like the mistakes we made, um, the buying mistakes we've made, buy, accidentally buying fakes, there's gonna be all that and it will be uh, laid bare. So I, I really hope you guys enjoy the new show and I wanna thank the guys at Tales from the Flip Side for uh, letting me join in uh, on their network and get the, this out there about how to run a comic book shop. So tune in, I think we're gonna be weekly, we'll see. Until then, be good.